what a pleasure to be here today. I love the atmosphere. I love the environment. I love what Michael said about the entire ecosystem is here. Is that pretty cool? I'm often asked just to speak to a certain segment of the ecosystem, like the mammals, <laughs> or the flora and fauna, or the reptiles. But we have all of those groups here tonight, and it's a pleasure to be with you. We're going to talk about uh, how to, it's an interesting group because you're so diverse, um, and please, um, I thought we all saw some great presentations tonight, so I am not speaking to the presenters tonight when I talk about how to improve your presentations. It just happened to go this way. But we're going to talk about how to engage someone in 15 seconds. It'll be, certainly be handy for anybody that does presentations. Hands up if you do presentations. And it'll certainly be handy if you do future pitches. And I know there are some of you in the room. And uh, so let's get started. I want to talk about uh, the first 15 seconds. And the reason this topic came to me was some time ago I had the great pleasure of going on a ride along in a police car. Has anybody done a ride along in a police car in the front seat? <laughs> when I initially got the invitation, I thought, well, this is going to be cool. I'll get to learn a little bit about, uh, about the experience and maybe do a blog post about it. And then I thought, well, no, this is, this is really excellent. I'm going to get inside the mind of a police officer on the road. And this is a rare opportunity. And I decided, one of the things I really wanted to find out from Dan Frazier when I rode along with him was, what goes through a police officer's mind when he stops you for speeding? And it's an interesting question, isn't it? And it turns out giving you a ticket is the last thing on his mind. He's focused on a lot of other things. Can anybody guess what? Safety is a big one. I mean, think about how they park their car. Your car is parked uh, parallel with the road. His car is parked like this behind you. Why does he park like that? That's exactly right, because when the rear end of his car juts out into traffic, he can protect himself from oncoming cars. So everything about it, he knows, he might know who owns the car, but he doesn't know who's driving. He has no idea what's in the car, and so he's very concerned about his safety. Uh, Sergeant Dan Frazier would tap on the trunk as he rocked around the car. Why did he do that? Why would he tap on the trunk? He, he could, well, yeah, well, not that the guy would answer if there was someone in the trunk, but the sound of the trunk, is it hollow, is it full? Uh, it's dangerous time to be a police officer right now. One time I saw him actually lift the trunk to see if it opened, just in case it might have been one of those uncomfortable ambushes. Now, when cops stop you for speeding, it's a matter of life or death. But pitching your next big enterprise is even more important than life and death. It's about taking care of your family and sometimes future generations. So let's get it right. Let's talk about things that you should do in the first 15 seconds uh, to engage somebody right away, whether you're in front of the room or face to face with them. You all have a handout, yeah? So I want you to write some notes down as we talk because um, I want you to take some uh, ideas back to the office and feel free to share these ideas because they're very valuable. They'll help everybody on your team. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, when you walk into the room, not here, not when you shake hands, not in the food line, but when you walk into the room, you're, people are watching you, right? And my dad was really good at this because he was a showman. Uh, it's true I have a background in music. And if you, anybody play a musical instrument, anybody have a background in showbiz, you know, there's something about a stripe of a musician or a magician or any type of performer. We have pretty healthy egos and we think people are watching us all the time. And you know what? We're right. People are watching us walk into the room. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because if your next big investor is in the room and he's watching you walk in, of course he's interested in how you act in front of the group, but he really wants to see how you are in private. He's not just investing in your idea. He's not just investing in your company. He's investing in you as a person, and he wants to know he's safe. Same thing we do in front of the room when we're presenting. How can we get people to like us, know us, and trust us very, very quickly? This is not an easy thing to do. So this idea of walking in the room with a good, strong self-image. Now, if I asked everybody in the room, how is your self-image on a scale of 1 to 10? Everyone in the room would say, oh, I'm an 8, 9. Some people would say 11, right? Performers, I'm an 11. And, and, and you may be, but the truth is that you may not be emanating that on first view. So one of the easiest ways to do that when you walk in is you walk in, and this is going to hit some of you sideways, I know, like you've been here before. You walk in like you own the place, right? And for some of you, say, you might say, well, no, that's, that's not my style, man. That's really uncomfortable for me. But own the place is your interpretation of own the place. I'll tell you one thing. If you walk in like this... 
You know, people have taken notice of this, right? You look like, not only you don't own the place, you look like you don't even want to be here. And people are noticing. So self-esteem and how you feel about yourself is really important. But my dad told me this. He said, you can help other people with their self-esteem. It's a misnomer, ladies and gentlemen. It's called self-esteem, but you help other people with it. And when you meet people and you talk to them and you ask questions in a three-to-one or even a five-to-one ratio, you're showing more interest in them than they are in you. That helps people feel good about themselves. And people will like you for that, right? When you ask those questions, don't get any more than a five-to-one ratio because it gets creepy. Just enough to stay ahead of the game a little bit, right? People love that kind of stuff. So we're already into the handout a little bit. When you show interest in others, others will show interest in you. Now, it turns out that there are certain words in the English language that are really beneficial for the first 15 seconds. I'm going to share the 15 most powerful words you can ever use with another person. And they're going to come to you in little phrases, right? The five most important words, the four most important, the three, they add up to 15. So the five most important words you can ever use with another person are, I am proud of you. I am proud of you. If you're talking to somebody who's pitching, you say, I'm really proud of you. It's got to be hard to get your idea out in front, have, you know, present your new baby to everybody. If someone's coming to pitch club for the first time, you might say, I'm proud of you for making it. Most people are too busy to find extra time for this kind of stuff. Well done. If you found a way to park for free in Lansing, I'm proud of you. Really good. That's a big achievement, right? So those are the five most important words. The four most important words are, what is your opinion? Really important in a venue like this, right? What is your opinion or what do you think, right? Is you always show interest in what people think. Even if you don't care what people think, it's a good idea to ask them what they think. Isn't that true? Absolutely. People love to be asked that, that question. The three most powerful words are, will you please? The two most powerful words are what? Thank you. And the number one most powerful word is anybody? Yes. Uh, good, good guess. It's not yes. It's not you. Why? It's not why. All these smart people in the room. No. It's not no. It's the person's name. The most beautiful sound in the world is the person's name. And that's why we, we, we give you name badges when we come in. We want you to call you, each other by your favorite word, you see. And, and nobody responds to any other word in the English language uh, like their name. So if you're really trying to appeal to somebody in a meeting of any kind, you want to use their name whenever possible. So here are some ideas for power signals. Now that you know what to say, what are some things that you can do? Because communication is both verbal and nonverbal. Would you agree? And when we say what we do and do what we say, that's called congruity. And that's how you know you're really dealing with a professional communicator, someone who can really get his or her ideas across. They have this thing called congruity, right? So if I say there's only three things you need to know, this is not an accident. I'm saying the number three as I hold up three fingers. Now I can count down the three fingers, right? And when I summarize, what can I do? So the three things are, you see? So it's all by plan. It's all by motion. Somebody called me for coaching for a TED Talk the other day, and I did it with them on the Zoom platform. We watch each other on video. And I was isolating various words in the speech so that they could have continuity with what they were doing and what they were saying. So when they said my, I had them do this. When they say the number three, they do this. If I say right now, I say snap the fingers now, right? Little tricks. And another thing, this is really important in my business, this is called the half step, right? So if I'm pitching something to you and I'm really confident about it, I definitely don't want to do this. Watch for what they call, in psychology, the tell. Thank you for listening to me today. I have a very exciting project that I want to tell you about. Did you catch the tell? What was it? It's called the half step. I took a half step back. What that says is, even I don't think this is that exciting. <laughs> Watch again. I'll do it in slow motion. Thanks for listening to me today. I have a very exciting project I want to talk to you about. Now watch the difference when I step forward. Thanks for being here today. I have something very exciting I want to talk to you about. Did you see it? It's so much better, and it's better than doing nothing. Thanks for being here today. I'm very excited about this thing I'm about to tell you. So there's that little half step forward, it's golden, man, and that's that, that's that nonverbal that we're really looking for. Some more, uh, and we're in the middle slide now of the handout. You want to um, polish your self-concept by, uh, if you don't feel good about yourself when you're talking to people, you know people can figure that out, right? Oh yeah, you, there are people that have this down. People, there are some people that get a vibe off of you if your car's dirty. Like they can tell you're disorganized. 
And, and, and I know we're not supposed to judge. You know, we tell people in school and church we don't judge. But people judge all the time, man. If you pitch tonight, you got judged tonight, right? Okay, so we know people are judging. We want to keep, put on our best show, and that's what we're trying to do. I mentioned earlier, when you walk into the room, you can walk in with what's called a neutral face or a resting face, or you can walk in with a little smile on your face. Which one's better for you? The smile, but it's incredibly hard to smile when you walk into the room. You got so many other things on your mind, right? What is this pitch club? Is this pitch with a B or pitch with a P? <laughs> I had to explain it that way earlier to some friends. You going where? And so when you walk into the room, if you're smiling, you belong here. You're confident, right? You've got something to share with people. Quiet, tell I'm talking. And so when you smile, you send a signal, I am at home, I am with my people, and it, and it really resonates with people. You also want to walk with purpose, right? There are two types of people in life, people that amble through life and people that walk with purpose, right? And I know a lot of us can't walk as fast as we used to maybe, but you should try to walk a little bit faster than you normally walk and a little bit faster than most people walk. Because when you walk fast, it sends a signal that you're important, you've got things to do. You're a person of purpose, right? And it sends a signal. And people decide about you really early on when they meet you. You know this is true in the first 15 seconds. Finally, you want to sit in the power seat. Guess where the power seat is in this room? Have a guess. It's toward the front. Front row usually has, is where the action is, right? If you're in the front row, you're in the visibility section for everybody else in the room. If you're in the back row, these people never see you until they get up to, actually, they're never going to see you. Right? In some rooms, they might see you as they leave, but in this room, they never see you. And you're here to get seen if you're pitching, so you want to be careful to get to the room early so you can sit in the front. We have a joke in the seminar business that everybody that gets there sits in the second row, which becomes the first row by de facto because nobody's in the front row. So you want to sit up front whenever you can. And then finally, when you do meet people, you want to have this killer elevator speech. What brings you here today? If you stutter or stammer, you get demerits. And the people will never say to you, you know, you sound, you sound like you don't, really, you don't really have it together yet. They just think it, right? And, and if you're pitching, and, and, you're, and you know, pitching is like this, right? It's like it's, we're waiting for the two circles to come together like this, right? And if you're early because you're not ready, then they say, I'm not, you know, it doesn't sound like a fit for me. They don't tell you it doesn't sound like you're ready. They say it's not a fit. And then you, you wait for the circle to come around again. You wait for your next appointment with that, with that uh, investor. Okay, we also know that the handshake's really important. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but there are three types of handshakes. Please tell me you know what they are. Yeah, the fish is the dead fish. Excellent, excellent. So when you shake hands with somebody, you just give them a couple fingers to work with, and it's, uh, uh, you know, so uncomfortable. And, and I've met men who do that on purpose with women. And I chased the guy down one time because the woman said, that guy's got a dead fish to me. And so I chased him down. And we got him in the parking lot. He probably thought I was a weirdo. And I said, hey, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. And we started talking. I, I, I made him feel safe. And then I said, tell me about your handshake. Tell me. Uh, uh, and he said, well, I think women like it when I shake hands like that. He thinks women like it. How did this happen? The second kind of handshake is called the bone crusher. All these are about signals. They're sending you signals, right? The, uh, the dead fish is sending you a signal. Maybe I'm uncomfortable with myself. Maybe I'm uncomfortable with you. Maybe I don't get out much, right? But it's not a good signal. The bone crusher is sending you a signal. What's his signal? I'm going to dominate you. I'm going to grind you down on price. I'm going to out-negotiate you later, right? And there are ways to defend against the handshakes. With the dead fish, you pull with your left hand, you pull the person's wrist closer to you until you get that firm grip and all the while maintain eye contact, right? All this has to be done in real time because you never get a second chance at the first impression. With the bone crusher, you actually have to telegraph to the person, <laughs> and men will never do this, that he's hurting you. <laughs> men are too cool. Men are just grit and bear it, man. Like they're in pain. Tears coming out of their eyes, but they never give it up. Right? But the actual technique is to say to the guy, oh, that hurt. And what do you think he says right away? I'm sorry. Right? And if you say it loud, he apologizes loud. And what this does is you've traded signals already. He said, I'm going to dominate you. You said, I don't think so. Right? It's all done very quickly in those few seconds. So it's pretty cool. So that's the perfect handshake. I want to wrap up with uh, a couple of other bits for you. Then we'll do some quick Q&A. Is this content good for you? 
Okay, very good. Um, you're all technical people in here, so you don't know, need to know about too much about the smartphone, but it's amazing how many people will take a phone call from somebody, and the other person mentions another person that's not on the call two times, three times, four times, five times, and then finally, you say to the other person, well, let me call him, and then what do you have to say? And then I'll call you back. You now have homework because he's talking to the wrong person. You ever think about this? And so I don't do this nonsense anymore. I say, let's do a three-way call. Now, what's interesting is the guy who's calling me about the third person is often complaining and saying things he doesn't want the other person to hear. So this is an interesting proposition. And I say, hey, let's call him right now and talk to him. And there's a little silence on the phone. <laughs> like, he doesn't know if this is a good idea. And then he goes, OK. And then I put those two get together on the call. They actually talk. And guess what he doesn't say? Any of the smack that he was saying earlier. That's fascinating to me. And I don't have homework. I don't have to call two more people back. So I love that. It's a three-way call. It's the, most, it's the simplest thing to do on a phone, and nobody does it. I don't know why. So finally, we want to find uh, sustainable ways to be persuasive. We want to teach other people these techniques so that they can be more persuasive, so that all of us can get what we want in life. Tell Ganesh invited me to this event. I've already met Michael. I can tell we're going to be great friends, and I look forward to meeting a number of you in the, in the uh, what do we call it, the afterglow. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Michelangelo Caruso.